Hi, welcome to Coach House Designs. Today, we're gonna to show you how to make the applique border for the My Baltimore quilt pattern. This is my finished quilt here, done in the linen color way. So the center is just pieced uh, squares from the panel, and then the border is done with hand applique, done on rectangles. So each little uh, swag goes on its own little rectangle. And then there's a square in the corner. So I'm going to show you how to make those shapes using my freezer paper method, which is my preferred method because it has a more durable edge for when you want to wash the quilt. And over here is the black version of the quilt, which is the one we're going to be working on in the demo. And this is, of course, just the center done. So here's the pattern that we're working on. So we've done the center for the black quilt, which is shown in the bottom right-hand corner. The border of the quilt is made from this fabric, and then you will have cut out 22 three and a half by nine and a half inch rectangles and four three and a half inch squares. You will then go to page four on your pattern and the two applique shapes that you're gonna be cutting out are on the right-hand side there. So there's shape A, which is the corner swag, and shape B, which is on the sides and top and bottom of the quilt top. So you'll need 22 of shape B and four of shape A. I use the Reynolds white freezer paper, which comes on a roll and I buy at the grocery store. Sometimes it's kind of hard to come by because they've replaced it from time to time with the brown, which is really hard to uh, see through. So um, you will need the white. If you can't find this at your grocery store, there is uh, freezer paper available at your quilt shop in smaller pieces um, like eight and a half by 11 pieces. So what you do is you place the freezer paper on top of your paper and if you press down you can see the edges of your template shape. If you would like to see it a little bit better you can use a light box underneath but you really don't need it with the white freezer paper. Once you have cut out your template shape along the lines that you have drawn you iron it onto the right side of your template fabric, in this case, the black rice paper print. The next thing you do is cut out the template and leave an eighth to a quarter inch edge of the black fabric so it shows beyond the edge of the template. I'm now gonna turn the template over. So we're working from the wrong side. And I'll start with this outside curved edge because it doesn't need any snipping. So I'm going to take my glue and this is Quilter's Choice liquid basting glue which is readily available and you just put a little bit along the edge. You don't want to put too much because it'll make it too wet. And you don't want to go too far so it doesn't so it dries before you get to that part of the shape. So I'm just going to use my awl and turn it and then use my finger to press it along the edge of the template. Now it's come a little bit loose here from the being ironed on. You can always uh, press it again the shiny side of the freezer paper sticks to the fabric and then can be taken off without damaging the fabric at all. So I'm just turning the edge as I go and pressing down fairly hard just to make sure that the glue sticks. And I've got this far. I'll stop and put more glue on. to the end. Oops, I'm not messing there. And here. So I just got my all again. Again, just pressing it down tight. And I can see, you can't really see it in the camera, but I am I can see the template underneath as I'm turning. And I'm using my finger to make sure that the edge of the fabric lines up with the edge of that template. I'll just continue along the side. And 
things here just come loose too. So then we just hold it. Okay, so the edge of the point is right here. So it's important that this fold comes to the point. So I'm just gonna do, press that down really hard and then this can fold over because we don't need that. So the edge is right there. Now, one thing you might want to do, especially when you're starting out, is just, just to flip it over and see how your edge is. Because while the glue is still wet, you can use your awl to sort of fix the little parts that aren't quite as straight as you'd like them to be. So just kind of move that, use your finger, use the edge, use your nail, just pull it out so it has a little better arc. There, that's better. Okay, so when we flip it over, we can see on the end here that the point is lined up right with the edge of the fabric here and here. So when I flip this over now, I can cut these ends off. So they're uh, out of the way. So there's about that much left on that side and on that side. Okay, so I turn it over again. Okay, oops, before I do that, you see this is an inside curve, so we need to clip that. It's not a very big curve, so you don't have to clip it that much, but I'm saying this can clip a little bit here with my scissors that could use some sharpening. And here. So one thing I do like to do is just do that part where the clip is first, just to get it out of the way, so then I can focus on the corners. So I'll just do this. And because the uh, fabric is on the bias, it's going to um, pull nicely along there and make a nice little curve. Okay, so there we go, that's to there. that just a little bit to make it go to the edge a little bit better in a couple spots. There we go. Take my glue and do the end. If you don't have an awl, um, you can use the edge of your seam ripper. Or the point of your seam ripper to uh, to press it over. I just broke my seam ripper so I'm not using it. Okay so then we just push when we get to the end. See there's the point of the template. Just kind of get to the end and then push this across so that it comes to a nice point that lines up with the edge of the template. And then when I turn it over I can just cut that part off and that was the part that was folded over so if this part's sticking out then you just use a little bit of glue just to tidy that up then here's my finished one okay so you can see the points all line up nicely and then I can take off my template. And there's a little bit of glue that you can see through. Um, that'll come off when you launder, but if it's uh, really noticeable and you would like to get rid of it, you can just, once you've got it sewn to the background, you can uh, dab it off with a wet cloth. Okay, so here's the shape for the corner swag. The points on them are done the same way. And all you need to do is here, we've got a really steep inside curve here. So we just cut that right to the edge of the paper. And then when we're doing this, pull it back right to where you've slid. And move this over. So 
to get to the end and then that's lined up so that part I don't need so then I can when I can turn it over I can cut that part that's folded over off and go back down the other side so here is the shape once I've finished uh, doing all the edges and take that off okay so the other thing that I've um, got in the pattern on page four um, are these two images which show you exactly where to place the points on your background square or rectangle so that they line up when you join them together. Okay, so here are the background rectangle for the side and top and bottom pieces and the cor uh, square for the corners. So if you look at your diagram, which is on page four, which is this piece here, um, it shows a dotted line around a square. The dotted line is your seam allowance. So you line up point one and point two so that when it's placed on there, it's gonna be lined up with the sewn edge uh, in your seam rather than the edge of the seam allowance, which is gonna get caught in your sewing. So the point one is a quarter inch in from the side and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. So if I place my little ruler here, so that's there and there. So it's a quarter inch from the side and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. It goes there. And this one is a quarter inch in here and three quarters in this way. Okay, so that needs to just move just a little bit. So it's more like that. And once you get it in the right spot, um, you can either use a little bit of glue to glue it down, or you can use applique pins. And these are Gina Kimball applique pins, and they're just they're nice and sharp and small, so they don't get in the way when you're sewing. So you put that down, or again, put a layer of glue on the inside edge about a quarter of an inch in, so it doesn't get in the way of your sewing. Now for the, for the side pieces, they are a quarter an inch in from the sides and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. Now this one's a little bit small. The thing is with these swags, because they're done by hand, they're not necessarily with your points gonna be exactly right, but this is pretty close. So that's a quarter inch and then three quarters up from the bottom. Oops, puts it about there. that so it's there so that's a quarter of an inch in and three quarters up so then we just pin this in place again or use the glue I like to use the glue just because it makes it more secure when you're sewing and then when you're sewing the edge you can use the decorative stitches on your machine I use a what looks like a blanket stitch, but it's actually called the applique stitch. It's not quite as heavy as the blanket stitch, which has more stitches per inch than the applique stitch. Or you can use the, the blind stitch. And there's a little diagram uh, on the last page of the pattern that shows you how to do that. So um, hopefully that will help you. Um, it does take a little bit of practice, so don't get frustrated. And if you want to try doing at one of the shapes with some scrap fabric first, just until you get um, the hang of it, you might uh, want to do that. It um, does become second nature after a while once you get the hang of doing it. And you can reuse these uh, template shapes. So once you've used it for this one, just pull it off and it'll iron on down again. And it should uh, probably last me seven or eight times before the shiny side doesn't stick anymore. So good luck with that and uh, hope you enjoy the pattern. Thanks. Bye.